let me let me just like while i'm kind of ranting about it a little bit because honestly it just ticked me off <laughs> like i don't even know this guy but it's just like the flippancy of just like yeah we're just moving you know it's not a big deal and i hope that we'll still be dedicated to the same mission and you know like all this kind of stuff and him not bringing up bible and like he was even asked uh by matt frad like the guy behind pints with aquinas he was even asked like what books helped you and he couldn't even give books like you know what that tells me he didn't read any like if you're if someone who's like all about intellectualism like his channel is who likes to give references to books and says like go and read this if you're interested in this uh line of thinking go read that book that makes me very skeptical okay uh of like are you actually reading those books or are you just recommending that people go read those books and you're smart enough to get away with looking like you read those books honesty <laughs> it just it just ticked me off and like when you're talking like he was talking about confession and how he's excited to go to confession they started talking about how good confession is and uh bringing their kids along and he was like oh it's not weird like cameron was saying that like oh it's not weird to bring your kids to confess uh confession it's not weird at all and it's like how would you even know you've never been uh-uh just i was yeah i was i was driving around running errands at that point and i was just like this is this is just bogus um pappy winky says i struggle with catholicism sometimes with catholicism sometimes like do i believe the right thing uh if you believe in jesus you do uh and also guys you want to know like I've talked about Catholicism before, but there is no historical backing between the first and into the third century about an apostolic line from Peter. You're not going to find it. What they do is they take, who was it? They take Ignatius and they take a reference to him talking about how good the Roman, like the, the church at Rome was. And they said, well, would Ignatius have uh, said that, you know, it was good if they were abusing their authority? Like, so obviously he agreed with it. And it's like, well, one, you have no backing to say the Roman church was making decisions for anyone else. And then two, like, really, you're going to base this huge theological thing of the, uh, the papacy off of a lack of a comment from Ignatius? Like get out of here it's just garbage so like for me like i understand like the idea of catholicism and there's a certainty of it uh of like you're part of the church and like all of that and there's like a unity in that it's the same church that's been going this whole time um but also the papacy is jacked up there's there's really no historical backing for the first three centuries of whether the papacy is accurate or not, and then from then on you do have some references to it, uh, but you don't have it in scripture, and that's like the main thing. Uh, so for me, the whole thing of Catholicism, like Cameron was was right about, um, you know, really having the papacy as like the cornerstone of the Roman Catholic Church, and on this rock I will build my church. Um, but yeah, uh, it falls apart. It's terrible arguments. And beware anyone. I will also say this while I'm ranting. <laughs> beware of anyone who puts percentages of accuracy on faith. Like the guy was talking about how he has like no reference to books that he read. No references really to scripture. No, inter like interacting with scripture, quoting scripture or saying, oh, this passage is one thing, but actually interacting with text never does. Beware of people like that who then say, well, I'm 97% sure that the papacy is true. Based off of what? How can you even know that? There's no data. Like there, there, there isn't something that you can reference outside of it to be able to understand a percentage like that's that's idiocy i 
I get a little worked up. <laughs> like, I don't, like, I, I just say beware of those people. Like, I don't think it's honest uh, to, to put on percentages because it's impossible. You can't know the percentages. Like, and even if you're talking about your own framework, then give the framework. But he won't do that. Not really. I saw that. I like the interviews on capturing Christianity, but I think it's kind of disingenuous to build a large audience on one thing and then completely switch everything. I mean, I understand it. Like, I get that. You know, you, you build your audience on one thing, which is Christianity. For him, he's saying that it's the same thing. It's just, a you know, switching to where I go uh, to church, essentially. And I think it's belittling of it. But I understand, like, you know, if I built up my channel and something switched in me, like I, I'm not saying it's ever going to happen, but if I, like, was no longer reformed, you know, I would talk about it on the channel. And I think that I would probably still continue doing my YouTube channel. So, like, uh, you know, I don't think I'll ever be as big as that channel. But, like, I'm just saying in a hypothetical world, like, I could see why, but, yeah. Uh, Sean says, here's a question regarding Catholics. What do you think of people who have accepted the work of Jesus, justification by faith, etc., yet continue to attend a Catholic church? Yeah, I've gotten, I've gotten this quite a bit because I say staunch things about the Catholic church. Um, people who are Catholics can be saved and still attend mass and still be, you know, working inside the the roman catholic church and I, what i mean by working i mean like functioning um but those who lead i mean those those who know what the roman catholic church I, like i can understand if someone gets saved and like the way that their priest talks about faith it sounds right and so they take it in that right way even though the priest means something different when he says it that happens I would say that people can stumble into genuine faith in the Roman Catholic Church because they teach the Word of God. And if the Word of God is there, it can impact your heart. Uh, so even wrong systems, you know, within that, people who believe wrongly, who are the ones giving out the Word, people who are in the pews or in the chairs listening, they might take it rightly. And, and so, like, I, I definitely know that there are Roman Catholics who are saved. But if you're going to teach in the Roman Catholic Church or even to continue in the Roman Catholic Church, no one should stay in the Roman Catholic Church because they teach false doctrine. It's a different gospel just because someone can hear the right gospel because, you know, maybe the priest didn't clarify what he meant according to the Council of Trent, like all those kinds of things. Then, you know, yeah, but I don't think that you should stay there. Uh, I don't think that it is good. <laughs> But I do think that Roman Catholics can be saved. Uh, but priests, I don't think so. Because you have to adhere to all the things, and you have to know it at least. Um, and if you know it and you're saying, I believe it, that's a different gospel. But people in the crowd, they could be saved. Uh, there are too many gaps for me to believe in Catholicism. The Bishop of Rome wasn't even at the Council of Nicaea. Did Peter ever lead the church in Rome? Why didn't Paul mention Peter in Romans? Right? Like, we get no references. They go off of, I mean, we do have some things in, like, I'll say secular history that talk about Peter being crucified in Rome. But it's not a guarantee. It's not inspired. And it's like, I'm talking about, like, there are conflicting reports. So we don't even know if Peter was actually crucified in Rome. Uh, same for Paul. Uh, but like, we can assume that because Jesus talking on the beach and saying, you will follow me basically in a death like mine, uh, it seems like that would be accurate. But that being said, doesn't mean like we have no reference in scripture to like, oh, the church in Rome would be more important. Like, even if you were to think about it logically, wouldn't it be the church in Jerusalem? Like, come on, there's, there's so many gaps that you have to get through to get, be believing in the papacy. It's, it's honestly ridiculous. 
Uh, how do they respond to what Paul says about Paul saying, if anyone add to these scriptures, they are anathema, right? Like even Matt Brad made a joke. By the way, Pints with Aquinas, I dig their style, both capturing Christianity and Pints with Aquinas, like the design stuff. I really enjoy, and I actually enjoy listening to Matt Frad on a few things. Like I find him to be an interesting person. Um, wrong, <laughs> a lot of ways, but an interesting person uh, to listen to. Um, I'm not recommending anyone else shit, but I'm just I'm just saying like there's part of me that likes these people. Uh, but Matt Frad was like even like made a joke about like. What are you going to get in uh, Rome while you're here? And they're talking about material stuff. Because, again, Roman Catholicism is mostly about materialism. Um, but uh, what are you going to get? And he was like, maybe a complete Bible. And they joked about it. And what they're joking about is the Apocrypha being in there. The Pseudopigrapha. Like having, having all of that in that Bible as a complete work. Those aren't inspired like come on we we made this decision together <laughs> back in the day like and they go against it and they add to scripture and it's ridiculous and that's where they come up with a lot of their ideology um sean says i agree uh Shanley, about the mary stuff why did paul never mention mary in any of his epistles is mary even in the new testament at all after pentecost because she doesn't matter not in that way <laughs> like Oh, it's, it's ridiculous. The absence uh, of all of these things. And they're like, well, the Bible doesn't specifically say not. Like, come on. That's not how we build arguments on the absence of condemnation. <laughs> like, come on. Uh, 